Get energized with tons of equipment. Simply join through the free PF app. Deal ends Thursday, February 16th. The Husson University Eagles take on the Maine Maritime Academy Mariners in a basketball doubleheader this Saturday, starting at 1 on ABC7. Find half-off deals today and save money by going to foxbangor.com. Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, Senator Susan Collins stopped by Bradford today to celebrate a milestone in a major town project. Our David Ledford has more. 175 years old. I think you're due for a new one. <laughs> Senator Susan Collins has secured $1.3 million for a new fire station in the town of Bradford. Fire Chief Jesse Young says the current station is both cramped and deteriorating limiting the firefighters' movement and their ability to use the station properly. According to Young, the station was forced to restrict the use of the building even further, following an inspection. Um, we're no longer allowed to use it for trainings or meetings. Um, they requested that we only have two people up here at a time, and it's only 45 pounds per square foot. Young says the building has been condemned twice in its history and that efforts to make changes have been in the works for years. According to Collins, projects like this one are part of her plan to help out small towns moving forward. My priorities as the new vice chairman of the Appropriations Committee is to look out for rural America and to make sure that rural America is not left behind. Chief Young spoke about some of the new features he's excited to see. In the new station, we are going to have um, showers and a kitchen and a training facility. There'll be more space. We don't have to worry about backing in the trucks because we have about an inch on each side in the station. Young says he hopes that construction will begin sometime this year and expects it to be completed by 2025. In Bradford, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Senator Angus King says there's important work ahead to help our nation's veterans. He's been named the newest member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee and says he'll use that position to provide more help to those who are struggling. Senator King tells us one of his biggest concerns is addressing the high rate of veteran suicide. Thousands of veterans take their own lives every year, and King says more needs to be done to reverse that concerning trend. Veteran suicide is, is one of the things, and we've got to look on it as a whole uh, problem that covers a lot of areas, but I just want to pass one thing on for your mm -hmm. viewers. 988 plus one. 9881. 988 is a national suicide prevention hotline, and if a veteran's on the line and then they press one, they go directly to someone who's especially qualified to deal with veterans that are in these tough circumstances. Senator King says much more needs to be done to help veterans as they transition back to civilian life. He's proposed legislation that will make sure they have essentials like proper clothing and provide resources to help start careers after their military service. And if there are veterans who are thinking about suicide, Senator King again recommends they call the special hotline where they can talk with veterans who know what they're going through. You can reach it by dialing 988 and pressing 1. A deputy was justified when he shot and killed a man during an incident in Mars Hill in April 2021. That's the finding of an investigation by Maine Attorney General Aaron Fry. 28-year-old Jacob Wood of Littleton called the Regional Communications Center and told them he wanted to die and wanted assistance to do so. He said he was mad at the woman he was with because she would not kill him and he was prepared to take her hostage and kill others in order to provoke a lethal response. He told dispatchers he'd already stabbed himself in the leg. When officers arrived, they saw Wood with a knife to the woman's throat. They repeatedly told him to let that woman go. He refused and said he would kill her. A deputy fired two shots and Wood died at the scene. Tests revealed he'd been using methamphetamine as well as other drugs. This Thursday, the Maine Public Utilities Commission launched an investigation into Electricity Maine, one of the companies that provides electricity through some or to some central Maine power company customers. According to Phil Bartlett, the chair of the Maine Public Utilities Commission, the group wants to know if Electricity Maine followed proper regulations for alerting customers of a recent rate spike that led to more than 170 complaints about skyrocketing electric bills. They have to be clear with customers so that they understand what they're paying and can opt out. They could choose to go to a different provider or back to the standard offer 
if the prices are unreasonable. A lot of customers didn't recall getting any kind of notice that their prices were going to go up. According to Bartlett, all electricity rate payers have a choice when it comes to their providers. Customers can choose between the default standard offer rate or shop around for another price. While the standard offer itself went up from roughly 11 cents to 17 cents per kilowatt hour, some electricity main customers say they saw their rate jump to 39 cents per kilowatt hour. According to Bartlett, if electricity main is found to have violated, violated rules or state law, they could have their license to operate in Maine revoked and affected customers could have the opportunity for a refund. The University of Maine at Augusta's Dental Health Clinic hosted its annual Give Kids a Smile Day in partnership with the American Dental Health Association. The event was open to children ages 5 through 19 who do not have a dentist. Students from the university's dental hygiene program provided free cleanings, exams, x-rays and fluoride treatments. The experience was a learning opportunity not just for the students but for the kids too. We're able to teach them about things that they might not they might not know because they're not able to access that regular routine dental care. So um, it's great. It's a great opportunity for both of us. University of Maine at Augusta and the American Dental Association will host another Give Kids a Smile Day that will take place on March 3rd. Those interested in scheduling an appointment should contact the university's dental health clinic. They can be reached at 262-7872. If you were lucky enough to get outside today, you may have been pleasantly surprised with the weather. There were places where it definitely felt like spring. There was a lot of melting with those warmer temperatures, and with that comes some slush and standing water on local lakes and ponds. Always a good reminder to check the ice before going out on any body of water, but still, those craving some warm weather got it, and it was a really nice day. It seems like those temperatures are continuing. Felt pretty comfortable out there tonight. And with a little bit more on what we can expect from the, in the coming hours and days, we'll turn things over and take a first look at our forecast. Thank you so much, Peter. Our first weather is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Star. All right, what a mess out there into the morning hours today. We had several inches of snow, but quickly melted away as the snow turned into rain. Temperatures started to rise, and yeah, it definitely was a mess out there. A lot more snow up north. For the most part, though, we are starting to clear up. Still a couple of flurries lingering in the northern part of the state, just north of Millinocket. But in general, this is very light and scattered, so no more accumulation will be in the area. We did actually decrease in snowfall depth in the area. We have just less than six inches of snow. But look at this line right here, just north of town, though. North of this, where Millinocket is, of course, into Caribou area. Some places have close to two feet of snow. Wow, incredible stuff. Temperatures earlier today were very warm. We were in the mid 40s out there. Same thing by Bar Harbor, Waterville, almost 50 degrees out there. So it was a pleasant, warm day. Temperatures right now, though, are cooling off as we continue to cool down. And tonight we'll be hovering in the 20s. Peter. All right, Conrad, thanks so much. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, we'll sit down with the Never Miss a Super Bowl Club. And we'll have a story about an Ellsworth woman working to preserve local history. Those stories and more local news for this. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone and my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. Silver Fox Automotive is a family owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American icon is back on tour. 
June 27th at Maine Savings Amphitheater. The multiple Grammy Award winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. Utah, Creighton, oh my. UNLV, San Diego State. Bam. Saturday at 2 Eastern on Fox. Quirk Ford invites you to check out the savings on 2022s. Save 2431 or choose 0% financing on Ford Escape. Lease the Ford F-150 XLT Crew Cab for $4.99 per month. It's your truck or SUV. Find it at Quirk Ford, Augusta and Belfast. Let's go. Sunday, the Super Bowl is on Fox. Let's go. It's not how you begin. You take advantage of the moment. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's get rolling now. But how you finish. Dominating the first step to the last step. Super Bowl 57, Sunday on Fox. Welcome back. A group of men are heading to their 57th Super Bowl game this Sunday. Fox's Stephanie Bennett has all the details from the Never Miss a Super Bowl Club. I still think the Super Bowl could have been a failure. And if you look at it today, that doesn't seem possible. They call it the Never Miss a Super Bowl Club. Getting together with these guys is just as important as the game. And as the name goes, these three members have never missed a Super Bowl game since it started in 1967. We all have the same goal. Go yeah. for this, go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, we're in a, and the club is shrinking. Back then, the price of a ticket was much more affordable. Here I have some of the real tickets from the first three. The interesting thing is they were $12. Tom Henschel, Gregory Eaton, and Don Crisman are all set to attend their 57th straight Super Bowl this Sunday at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. And although their home teams are not playing this year, the trio is divided on who they're rooting for. I'm going with the Eagles. Eagles, all right. Chiefs. Chiefs. Eagles. Every touchdown, every interception, every single history-making moment, these guys have been there. 51 is my favorite because my team was down and out 28 to 3 and they came back and won. Over the years there have been near misses. So I promised again at 50 I would quit and the Patriots get in 51 I had to go. I said I'm going when the Lions win and they haven't won one so I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> one year Tom was stuck in the ER after an allergic reaction to seafood but that didn't stop him. As soon as she, she walked out the door I threw out the IV oxygen Bad out of that, uh, uh, that hospital. They've seen everything from upgraded stadiums, the invention of the seat cushion, fancy holographic tickets, and hyped up halftime shows. The halftime show was two college bands. You know, no superstar. And then they let some balloons and a basket of pigeons go. But most importantly, it's about sharing memories and laughter. I've met so many people who say they give their right or left arm for to go to one. And here, I've been to 56. I feel like I'm greedy. Just such a great story there. And it's so fascinating to hear how the game has changed throughout the years. $12 for a ticket back in the day. That's really something else. All right, well, one of the biggest questions ahead of the weekend, what are you going to have in your Super Bowl spread? Well, our chief photographer, Dave Simpson, headed over to Emery's Meats and Brewer to see some of the most popular selections for your barbecue or smoker this weekend. We've got the spicy wings, and then we also have fun stuff like a fully cooked meatball, which is great for the little appetizer meatballs. We've got smoked olives, we have dip, we have shrimp, um, we've got jalapeno poppers, french fries, so a lot of things you can make up really easily. Well, whether your get-together is large or small, it's never too early to start planning your menu. Of course, you can stay with ABC7 and Fox 22 for all of your Super Bowl 57 coverage. An update now on a story we brought you on Thursday. The pipes at the Bucksport Senior Center had froze and then they burst during the cold snap over the weekend. That caused damage that temporarily suspended food service for seniors. Well, after a week of cleanup and repair and some great donations from the Hannaford and Bucksport, seniors were treated today to a hearty lunch. The grocery store provided rotisserie chicken, potato salad, and some great desserts. The center's director, William Foster, and many other seniors were grateful for the meal. Food services are expected to be restored by the, at the senior center by next week. 
Well, the Eastward Mall has been home to a number of businesses over the years. One in particular is operated and maintained by a sole employee and future owner looking to preserve a sport in the city of Ellsworth. Our Noah Smith has the story. The familiar sounds and smells of a bowling alley invoke a strong sense of nostalgia in many of us. Autumn Maui is 20 years old and currently the sole operator of Demandas, a candle pin bowling alley tucked away at the Eastwood Mall in Ellsworth. So I used, I used to be lane mechanic for previous owners, um, so I've been here actually four years in total. So um, we're, there were four working lanes left um, and COVID had hit and that's when the previous owners decided to shut it down. Rather than see the alley fall into disrepair, Maui turned to her family, purchasing the bowling alley with her mother. So that's when um, I asked my mom about taking over, and that's when she took over, and the plan was for both of us to be here together. While her mother currently owns the alley, she's gearing up to fully take over later this year. The first and only goal of me taking over was to save it, um, and just because I learned that it was a dying sport, now it's, I love the retroness of it, and now it's really um, the environment, the memories that it creates for, you know, the community itself, and just keeping a family entertainment center alive for everyone. However, preserving history has a steep price. The lanes are 100% wood, which means they cannot be oiled or cleaned with liquids and ultimately need to be replaced. The pin setters at Demandos are some of the oldest operating pin machines around. Assembled in 1949, they are still kicking nearly 75 years later, but not without some nuance. Maui works hard to keep the machines running smoothly, but she knows that a big change is needed. So they have to all be ripped out and replaced or rebuilt and rewired. So that is the goal. And I just do one at a time because with how much I'm looking to be, each lane is going to be 25 k including labor cost um, and everything else with it. Friends of Maui quickly worked to set up a GoFundMe for the alley to aid with repairs and the rather expensive task of replacing the machines and lanes. While Maui was hesitant at first, she was amazed by the community's response. Well, um, I had chosen the goal for it, which was 10K, and it is now almost 14K, which has been amazing, to say the least. The bowling alley suffered an electrical surge over the holidays, damaging scoring monitors, and recent storms have caused water damage to the arcade room, presenting yet more challenges for Maui. A passion for the sport, the warm feeling of nostalgia, and a penchant for hard work keeps Maui moving forward, ready to take on what comes next. Pretty much um, just doing as many upgrades as I can um, moving forward and just hoping that the lanes uh, keep going for me. For more info, as well as a link to the ongoing GoFundMe, you can visit Demanda's website at demandas.com. Just something amazing about candle pin bowling. Anyone can pick up a ball and have some fun. So just an amazing story there. And great to see that she's keeping that alive in Ellsworth. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, we'll have an update on the Chinese spy balloon fallout. And earlier today, the FBI searching the home of former Vice President Mike Pence. We'll have the latest on their findings. Those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. Say goodbye to lag times and death spirals with our crazy fast fiber internet. At GoNet Speed, we've dropped our prices on fiber. That means hello to fast fiber internet starting at just $49.95 per month. Or go up to 1 gig, that's 1,000 megabits per second, for only $69.95 a month. The lowest prices we've ever offered. No contract, no hidden fees, no joke. Visit GoNetSpeed.com to check availability in your area. It is said that the eyes are the windows into the soul, which begs the question, can a window have a soul? At Renewal by Anderson, we think so. When it's a window forged from fibrex and over 100 years of refined craftsmanship, the essence of who we are transforms into a superior, stunningly beautiful window. So yes, a window can have a soul. For a limited time, take advantage of this great offer. Find out why we are the better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. 
We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. The U.S. military shooting down another aerial object over, the US, over U.S. airspace on Friday. The White House saying the craft was spotted over Alaska and deemed a threat to aviation. And President Biden ordered it neutralized. The incident now raising new questions about whether the president was right to wait so long to take out another Chinese balloon. Fox's Jackie Heinrich has more. Success. A single word from President Biden on his decision to shoot down an unidentified unmanned object over Alaska. U.S. officials can't say right now whether it was another spy craft or where it came from. But the president's biggest concern was its altitude and unpredictable path. And posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. Out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of the Pentagon, President Biden ordered the military to down the object. The Biden administration has defended allowing last week's Chinese spy balloon to make its way across the U.S. before shooting it down off the coast of South Carolina. That raises the question, would they do this again? Today's response indicates maybe not. I can tell you that the president doesn't regret the, the way that we uh, handled the first balloon. Um, that time we, first of all, apples and oranges here in terms of size. As I said, this was size of a small car, and it was over uh, a very sparsely populated area. President Biden also facing criticism for making this claim about the Chinese spy craft downed Saturday. It's not a major breach. U.S. officials offering few details explaining that. We don't know what intelligence or communications um, could have been collected or what devices they were targeting, as I understand it. So that being said, how can the president say it was not a major breach if we don't know that? What we do know is uh, we knew the basic flight path of this thing, and we were able to take steps at sensitive military sites. And as the recovery continues, stalled because of bad weather, the State Department is reportedly considering sanctions if Western companies are found to have helped produce the balloon that China used to spy on the U.S. Officials tell Fox the administration is still assessing where the object that was shot down over Alaska landed and the degree to which they can get to it. They say it fell over frozen water, which should help in the recovery effort. And the only message the U.S. is sending right now is that it's vigilant about its airspace. At the White House, Jackie Heinrich, Fox News. The U.S. is ramping up its assistance to Turkey and Syria following Monday's devastating earthquakes. The White House saying it's providing $85 million in help with response, rescue and structural damage assessment teams already on the ground. As the death toll climbs, conditions for the living continue to deteriorate. Fox's Greg Palcott is in southern Turkey with the latest. Nearly five days since the earthquake struck, the region reeling on several fronts. The grim death toll mounts now around 25,000. 12,000 buildings have been destroyed or damaged, leaving hundreds of thousands without homes, power, heat. Feeling the political heat, Turkish President Erdogan in the quake zone again, admitting his government has faltered. Unfortunately, it is a fact that we have not been able to respond. Seems like we're having some trouble with that story and getting that to you. So in the meantime, 
The FBI searched former Vice President Mike Pence's home on Friday for nearly five hours, making another classified document discovery. Meanwhile, Pence is also facing a subpoena in an investigation into his former boss. Fox's Caroline Shively reports from Washington. The FBI found at least one classified document in the Indiana home of former Vice President Mike Pence on Friday. Agents also removed six unmarked pages in a five-hour consensual search. Last month, his attorneys reported finding a small number of documents with classified markings that had been accidentally boxed up and brought to the home, which they then handed over to federal officials. Mistakes were made, uh, but I take full responsibility for it, and I've directed my counsel to work uh, with the Department of Justice, with the archives, and, and with the Congress on a full investigation, and, and we're cooperating in that as we speak. The Justice Department is also investigating classified papers found at President Biden's home and former President Trump's months-long refusal to return classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort before they were seized by federal agents. Both Trump and Biden have been assigned special counsels. No word yet on whether the Justice Department will do the same for Pence. The discovery of documents in the homes of high-ranking government officials is a cause of grave concern. The reason is that uh, we are worried that it demonstrates something fundamentally flawed in the way we handle information. In a separate probe, the Justice Department has subpoenaed Pence in an investigation into attempts to overturn the results of the 2020 election by Trump and his allies. The subpoena sets up a unique dynamic between the two men. Trump has declared his presidential candidacy for 2024, and Pence is thought to be a potential challenger. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. All right, back to that story from the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. We're going to bring that to you now. Nearly five days since the earthquake struck, the region reeling on several fronts. The grim death toll mounts now around 25,000. 12,000 buildings have been destroyed or damaged, leaving hundreds of thousands without homes, power, heat. Feeling the political heat, Turkish President Erdogan in the quake zone again, admitting his government has faltered. Unfortunately, it is a fact that we have not been able to respond as fast as we hoped. Despite some aid now finally reaching northern Syria, residents there, battered by years of war, are struggling to survive. Syrian President Assad, also in the region, blaming the international community. The politicization of the situation is a normal thing, but their human feeling does not exist. Despite all these horrors, rescue workers were still coming up with miracles. Two young children pulled from the rubble in the Turkish town of Nerdagi, a 27-year-old woman found alive in the wreckage of Hatay. And in Gaziantep, a happy end to a story we first reported Wednesday. Emergency workers dug through a collapsed apartment building looking for 17-year-old Adnan Mohammed Korkut. His mother, who managed to make it out alive, looked on with terror. Until the scene turned to joy early this morning when the teams brought him out. He had made it through some long days in a collapsed basement. I just waited for you all to arrive by myself. Thank God you arrived. Thank you, everyone. His mother promising to stay close to him forever. God bless my son, who I won't leave alone for an hour. May everyone be blessed as well. Not everyone is blessed. At the site behind us where that teen was rescued, five bodies were recovered on Friday. It's believed six more are buried. And so the teams work on here, maybe hoping for another miracle, probably accepting the worst. In Gaziantep, Turkey, Greg Palcott, Fox News. Just some devastating images there, but we're still remarkable to see the rescue efforts underway and that people are still being rescued. Here's hoping they can get to more. Well, coming up, we'll have our full five-day forecast. Stay with us for that. All right, Super Bowl Sunday is around the corner, and we're all wondering who's going to win. But we also need to know, what is the weather going to be like? Is it going to be warm? Is it going to be sunny? I'll have all the answers plus more coming up. Three mentors, three floors, one next level chef. We're on the top. I want to stay here. That's what I'm talking about. Next level chef premieres after the Super Bowl on Fox. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical Services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. 
How Maine is that? Mechanical Services. We're everywhere you are in Maine. Pond Hill Farms in Brooks, Maine offers 100% grass-fed beef in a variety of ways. Choose between individual cuts that are state inspected and ready to pop in your fridge or freezer. If you're looking to stock up, Pond Hill Farms offer the option to purchase hanging weight by quarter, half, or whole. We also offer live cattle if you're looking to grow your own herd. Pond Hill Farms also offer rental cottages with spectacular views of the farm and the Maine outdoors. Whether you're looking for fresh Maine meat or a gorgeous place to vacation, Pond Hill Farms is the place to be. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Where will your new Chevy take you this year? Anywhere. Find new experiences. Find new roads. Get 2.99% financing for five years on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups or get $12.50 cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional $2,500 cash allowance. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport. All right, welcome back, folks. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Super Bowl is right around the corner. Our main weather today is brought to you by Varney Ford. Varney Ford in Newport gives one full year maintenance on every new and used vehicle they sell. Come visit them and see their huge selection of cars and trucks. The nice car and truck people. Winter weather advisories are gone. And nothing really in our area besides some small craft advisories that are in effect till around 11, but they most likely will be getting extended. Same thing with those gale warnings closer to the coast. Visibilities are actually starting to improve right now. Bar Harbor does have a slightly lowered visibility. A little bit of fog in the region up north by Caribou. Three miles visibility still because of some snow in the area. They did have several inches of snow, but... Overall, though, we are clearing up right now, though. Still some lingering clouds, a couple of sprinkles in the region, uh, some flurries up north, just north of the Greenville area. But everything will start to calm down. Take a look at upstate New York, though. They do have a little bit of snow. This lake effect snow is starting to kick in right now. Watertown's probably going to get several inches of snow with that flow of the air pretty much going counterclockwise right now. And that's going to really get that lake effect snow machine on. And things will start to deteriorate in upstate New York. For us, though, we're going to be in the clear. A couple of uh, clouds lingering in the area. Most of this precipitation showing up on the radar. The snow is actually going to be Virga, which is precipitation that will not be reaching the ground. So we're not going to see any more precipitation the next couple of days. Wow, finally some clearing with some pretty warm temperatures at that. Look at this warm air starting to make its way up north. New York City, Washington, D.C. We're in the 50s today, even some 60s in Washington, D.C. earlier today. So, yes. Lots of mild air. I feel like this has uh, been a repeating trend. The whole winter we've been pretty mild so far, uh, all in the northeast. Temperatures, though, take a look at this roller coaster ride. Tomorrow we're cooling down near average. Sunday, of course, Sunday football, our big day Super Bowl is going on. We're going to see lots of sunshine. Temperatures around 40 degrees, a little bit cooler Monday into Tuesday, but another nice rebound Wednesday, especially into Thursday. Wow. 50s will be back, so a lot of the snow will be melting away. We do have a little bit of a breeze out there that's going to continue into tonight. As temperatures continue to cool off, we're going to be hovering at 22. So be careful out there, folks. Things will be refreezing. There will be a lot of ice with those mostly cloudy skies.
Tomorrow, though, temperatures near the freezing mark, so still a feeling like winter out there under a partly cloudy sky. Our extended forecast outlook does show lots of sunshine for a Super Bowl Sunday, and then the rest of the week, it looks like we're going to have lots of sunshine. Temperatures slightly above average in the 30s and even in the 40s by Wednesday. Peter? All right, a very favorable five-day forecast there. Thank you, Conrad. And get ready. Friday night fast break is coming up. Tyler and Ryan will break it all down for you. It's the Toyota of Washington's birthday sales event at your all-wheel drive headquarters, giving you, for a short time only, cash-saving deals. Right now, you could save up to $1,100 cash with low 3.99% financing on most four-wheel drive Tacoma models. And every Tacoma comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. Hurry to the Toyota of Washington's birthday sales event for cash-saving deals only at your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? When the forecast calls for nasty weather, all roads lead to down east. With Toyota's impressive lineup of 15 all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles, you're sure to find a model and payment that's right for you. Don't see it on our lot? Here's the latest update on models arriving soon. Pre-order yours now for the fastest delivery. When main roads get messy, all roads lead to down east. Your four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive headquarters on Wilson Street in Brewer. Still? Yeah. How many pages got left? 30. Break time. Good looking out. I got huh. you, I got you. Now you can mix and match a McChicken, McDouble, or six piece chicken McNuggets. Choose two for just $3.99, only at McDonald's. Friday Night Fastball, brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts team. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. This is Friday Night Fast Break. I'm Tyler Cruz here with Ryan Sudol, presented by Coastal Auto Parts. Last week of the regular season, and then the fun really starts to begin. Today was the last day of the regular season with snow days and makeups. Just a few teams in action on Friday night. But before we get into the action, let's look at where we stand. For Class AA girls, Oxford Hills on top, Chevrolet second, Bangor third, four, five, and six, Wyndham, Hamden, and Deering. And at seven, eight, and nine, Edward Little, Portland, and Lewiston. Lewiston not making the playoffs and this year. And for the boys, Oxford Hills, they wrap up their season 17 and one. Portland wraps up 13 and five. So do Lewiston and Chevrolet. Hamden Academy, who just beat Lewiston in overtime, 10 and eight in fifth place, right in the middle. Then you have Edward Little, Wyndham, Bangor, and Deering. They all finished 5-13, and 2-16, and 0-18. Oh, all right, for Class A girls, we go now. And we will start at the top there. Gardner, 18-0. and 0. Lawrence, 15-3. and 3. Coney, 14-4. and 4. Camden Hills, Nakoma, Skowhegan, 4-5 and 6. 7-8-9, Erskine, Brewer, Mount Blue, Mesolonsky in 10th. And for the boys, Oxford Hills, 17-1 and 1 at the top. Portland. Oh, that, that's actually class double A. At the top of class A North, boys we know is Brewer. Who there we go. Oh, no, that's... 17 and 1. Um, let's just move on to class B North girls now. <laughs> okay, class B North girls, Old Town 18 and 0, number 1, Caribou 2, Ellsworth 3, Washington Academy 4, Holden 5, MDI 6, Foxcroft, Foxcroft Academy 7, Prescott 8, MCI 9. All right, and for Class B boys, we go crossing my fingers here. There we go. Ellsworth 18 and 0 on top. Winslow 17 and 1. Old Town 16 and 2. Orno 14 and 3. Foxcroft Academy. They're at 12 and 5. Caribou 11 and 6. Presque Isle Mount View. Washington Academy rounding us out. 
There's Class A North girls. Gardner, 18-0. Lawrence, 15-3. Number three, Coney, 14-4. Camden Hills, Nokomis, Skowhegan, 4-5-6. Erskine Brewer, Mount Blue, 7-8-9. Mesolansky at 10. Wait. All right, so we will take a break from the standings here and head to some action. We'll start out up north in Dover Foxcroft. We are at Foxcroft Academy for a doubleheader starting with the boys, Ponies. Hosting Presque Isle will start in the third quarter. Watch Presque Isle's Malachi Cummings go baseline with the sweet reverse. Nice. Right there, he gets it to go. Wildcats up big later. It's Caden Crocker for Foxcroft. Pulls up from Panabs, uh, Piscataquis, and he hits it. Nothing but net. Wildcats still lead, but Pony's not going away in the fourth. Adam Connor from Jaden Richard. He buries the three from the top of the key, but Presque Isle was too much. Here's Dawson Bulu to Jack Hallett. He can't hit it. Jack Buck on the putback. A big win here for Presque Isle. They win 67 to 55. Okay, now let's go to the girls game, the nightcap. Can the Wildcats get the sweep before prelims? Let's start first quarter. Foxcroft, Destiny, Weymouth to Halley Page. The bank is open from deep later. Watch Presque Isle's Anna Jundro. Starts all the way back at the end line against Page. Takes her across half, blows by her, and gets the floater to go off the glass. Foxcroft leads after one, though. Second quarter, Prescott's Addison Claremont to Russell and Buck for the corner three. Nothing but net there. And finally, here's Annie Reigns for Foxcroft, former star of a minute with, bringing it down. Nice move in the open court. Great pass to Allie Smith. She banks it in. It would take overtime to decide it, but the Ponies win 48-41. All right, back to some B-Boys action here. This one is up in Orono. Caribou trying to grab a win over the Red Riots. First quarter, Caribou is up. And they're on the break. It's Henry Bear. Gets a little fancy on the lay-in. Gets it to go. And we'll go back the other way here. Pierce Walston. He oh, says, give me that. Give me it. And then a nice pass to Will Francis in stride for two. Francis now. Great spin move. He's oh. going to come up short. But Walston out of left field. He's going to get the second chance points to go. Vikings still holding on. It's Ebear again. He's going to adjust his shot. Mid-air hair. Ooh. What a play right there. It gets it to go. Nice play from him. But once Orno took the lead, they did not give it up. Here's Walston on the break. He gets up there and finishes. Riots win 61-51. to All right, let's put a bow on the rest of the standings now. We'll go to Class C, and we will start over with the girls. Dexter 17-1. They are on top. PVHS 17-1. Hodgden 17-01, real battle for the top spot there. Dexter finishing in first. And then you have Central, Matanaw, Cook, and Callis, 4-5-6, 7-8-9, Naraguegas, Fort Kent, and Woodland. And over to the boys, Callis 1, Fort Kent 2, Dexter 3, Fort Fairfield, Woodland, and Lee Academy at 4-5-6, George Stevens 7, PVHS 8, and Penquis Valley at 9. And for Class D, starting with the girls, Southern Aroostook 13-3. That's no surprise there. Wisdom. The 3 is. <laughs> 50, well, the three is, yes. Wisdom, 15-0 and 0 at two. That's heel points for you. Machias at three. Deer Island, Stonington, four. Katahdin, five. East Grand, six. Jonesport, Beal, seven. Ashland and Skank, eight and nine. All right, and Class D boys here. Southern Aroostook, 18-0, and 0, coming off of the state championship win. Machias, 14-4. and 4, And then you have Skank and Bangor Christian at three and four. Easton, Katahdin, and Wisdom. And then Jonesport, Beals and Ashland round us out. So, as we just saw with the Class B North standings, it's Pretty heavy at the top with quite a few contenders for that Class B North regional crown. And down in Winslow, the Black Raiders are sitting pretty with just one loss, ready to make a splash at the cross center. Here's more in this week's Hardwood Spotlight. I know that we work our, work our butts off 100% every practice, and it shows during the games. We're not done yet, though. We're trying to compete for states come March. Winslow boys basketball is one of the hottest teams in the entire state. They're on a 12-game winning streak and have locked up the two-seed in B North. It's an experienced group. They've got a lot of continuity in playing together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a good group in terms of leadership. The kids come ready to play every day. That leadership has been key to the Black Raiders season. Senior Jason Reynolds became the team's all-time leading scorer this year and is hard to stop on all fronts. He leads the state in rebounds. He's the best rebounder I've ever seen in his jump shots. He shoots a little bit like Larry Bird, and you can try to contest the shot, but he's 6'4", so you're, it's not really going to work. He uh, rebuilt his body into being a, a lot stronger this year. Most importantly, he's a high-character person, so he's got the work ethic and the talent and the drive. Reynolds' right-hand man is senior guard Andrew Poulin. While one may get more buzz, Poulin is just as much of an X factor. Well, Andrew's explosive athletically. He can get to the rim against a variety of defenses. 
And he can finish around the rim even though he's not very big. Well, I just know that he takes a lot of the offensive pressure off me. And I take a lot of offensive pressure off him. He can't be overlooked too on this team. I know he's, he's one of the best players in the state himself as well. When all is said and done, the Black Raiders are pining for their first state title in 20 years. To pull it off would be a special honor considering who they play for. It means a lot to you know bring one home to our community, our fans, and all our supporters, and especially our parents. You know, it means a world to all of our teammates and the coaches and the people of Winslow. We're all going to be working towards a state championship, and I can't wait come March to see if we can bring a state championship home. All right, hopefully Winslow can grab some big wins at the Cross Center. Herman Girls Hoops came away with a big comeback win over John Bapst on Thursday at the Cross Center. You were there for that one. Yes, we did. And after that, yes, we, I was. Yeah, and after <laughs> that, we caught up with Hawk senior Bella Bowden for what could be this season's finale of A Minute With. Uh, popcorn, hands down. I love popcorn. <laughs> with M&Ms, though. <laughs> Oh, probably Jordan. Probably would have to be some like homemade cookies. Chocolate chip or sugar, those are the best. Favorite cartoon character? Oh boy, I have to think back to my cartoons. Pluto from Mickey Mouse, I think he's really cute. Um, probably neither. I'm not, I mean, if I had to, probably tea, but I don't really like either. <laughs> Hey, this is like an inside joke of my soccer coach, but like lip gloss, but <laughs> it's really good and he loves it, so it makes it just all the better. All right, now I know you weren't here for much of soccer season, but if you know MJ Ball, that reference will just send you. That is hilarious right there that he loves that song, Lip Gloss. I just very, love the song. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me doing the... <laughs> very, very funny. Um, we'll be right back with more Friday Night Fast Break after this. Stay with us. Here at Garrett's Auto Sales, we believe in fair prices, superior service, and always treating the customer right. We have a fantastic selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs to choose from, with some priced under $10,000. All our vehicles come with a complimentary 30-day warranty and can be seen at GarrettsAuto.com. Come see us at Garrett's Auto Sales, where we focus on you, the customer. We're located just two miles from the Brewer Walmart on Route 1A. We look forward to meeting you. Whoa, that's a great deal. A great deal isn't a great deal if almost no one can get it. Seven feet tall. It's a fun ride. But lonesome. See ya. At U.S. Cellular, there are no surprises about who's eligible for our best deals because we don't believe in hidden requirements. That's why right now you can choose from any unlimited evolved plan and get $700 off any phone with no trade-in needed. Exclusively at U.S. Cellular. Boop. Hood is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. Why? Our country style has more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. And our expertly blended flavors are a taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood cottage cheese. Napa knows how to stay warm. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts has just what you need to prepare for any outdoor activity. Lightweight, durable, and designed for comfort. Milwaukee's heat-on-demand jackets and hoodies are the perfect cold-weather gear. No matter the job, no matter the weather, you'll be ready for anything. And while you're here, sign up for Napa Rewards. You'll save more each time you shop. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. Once upon a time, there arrived a new season of fanciful fun with whimsical wonders of plenty. But who will win the magnificently ever after? <laughs> The Masked Singer returns this Wednesday on Fox. The Husson University Eagles take on the Maine Maritime Academy Mariners in a basketball doubleheader this Saturday, starting at 1 on ABC7. Welcome back in to Friday Night Fast Break. Tyler Cruz here with Ryan Sudol. Last Friday Night Fast Break, Friday Night Fast Break of the year. Yes. We have Fast Break Tournament Edition. That's right around the corner a week away. Yes. So with that being said, way back in week one of this show, we made some way too early and some way too, you're supposed to join me there, way <laughs> too early championship predictions. Let's run through those for old time's sake. All right. So for the girls, I had Bangor, Gardner, Gardner Caribou in Class B, Hodgden in Class C. 
Southern Rustic in Class D. Ryan, you also had Southern Rustic repeating, Haldale repeating, Oceanside repeating, Skowhegan and Chevres repeating as gold ball champs. And for the boys here, we'll let you take this one. Yes, Class AA, you had Oxford Hills. I had Thornton Academy. Class A, you had Brewer. I had Falmouth or Skowhegan. Um, couldn't decide. Couldn't decide. <laughs> uh, Class B, you had Orono. I had Ellsworth. Uh, for Class C, you had Deergo, I had Dexter. And for Class D, you had Forest Hills. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, you had Forest Hills. I had Southern Rustic. Awesome. So with that being said, and I'll preface with this, preface this with I'm a golf guy, but I'm not a good golfer. So I like to use, you know, a mulligan every now and then. I keep a ball in my pocket. Me, not so and, much. And I play one for every nine holes, right? So just to make it even. And here, we're going to make them with our picks. One for boys and one for the girls. So here we go. My mulligan in Class B for girls is going to be Old Town Very, I taking mean, that state championship instead of Caribou. Really had to dig deep for that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's go to the boys here. Now, for you, you have Lawrence. Yes, you Lawrence. Lawrence, um, it, Lawrence um, uh, it was uh, sorry. Yeah, my Mulligan was was Lawrence for the girls instead of Skowhegan. And and, uh, and now let's go to the boys. Sorry about that. No, uh, you're class good. Double A, Hamden Academy is my Mulligan um, instead and, of Thornton Academy. And, and your then, Mulligan is class. Uh, I'm gonna is, go down east. I got to go with the Bulldogs down at Machias. What a season they have had so far. So I'm gonna ask you. Tell me your thinking here, your yeah. process of what, how you came up with Hamden Academy and Lawrence. They're really, I mean, Lawrence, they're number two, so they're not yeah. as much of an underdog, but two underdogs. Yes, but last night, uh, Lawrence, a statement win over Coney, and you talk about something that can really be a, mo- a momentum boost to a team heading into the tournament. That is exactly what they needed. And, you know, Gardner's been rolling through everybody. Yeah. It's been more of the same. There's no they've, jolt they've there. They've had some close games there, but they haven't really. It's not like yeah. the Brewer situation exactly. where Skowhegan beat them in their home court. Yeah. Like they haven't really been. There were no overtime games. They've just won every single one of these yeah. games. And then on the other hand, Hamden Academy, you and I both know why I have Hamden Academy, and that is because of Zach McClellan. Yeah, he is a certified baller. Yeah, and like. It's kind of like Steph Curry with Davidson in the tournament back in 09. <laughs> yeah, um, yep, you, yep. If you have that one guy that can do everything on the court, they can make a deep run. Exactly. And Zach McLaughlin is that guy. I think last year Dave sat here, and his mulligan was also Hamden Academy yeah. in Class AA. We've got a little bit more coming up for you after the break. Stay with us. Tonight's Stock Report is brought to you by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel. Come stop by for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. It's the Toyota of Washington's birthday sales event at your all-wheel drive headquarters, giving you, for a short time only, cash-saving deals. Right now, you could get a cash-saving 3.99% financing deal on an all-wheel drive RAV4. And every RAV4 comes with two years no-cost maintenance and Toyota Safety Sense. Hurry for the Toyota Washington's birthday sales event for cash-saving deals only at your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Since 1950, Fairhaven Camps, located in Brooks, Maine, has provided quality Christian summer camping experiences to young people from Maine and beyond. At Fairhaven Camps, we empower youth from ages 6 through 17 to seek the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fairhaven Camps offers day or overnight camps as well as horsemanship and wilderness camps. Fairhaven Camps is now hiring for summer staff and accepting registration for campers. To sign up, apply, or donate, please visit www.fairhavencamps.org or call us today. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia, has you covered. Front wheel drive, all wheel drive, hybrid, or fully electric. Brand new 2023 Kia Sportage, Sorento, Soul, Forte, and more. Check out the all new 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid with 54 MPG Highway or the affordable Sporty Forte with 41 MPG Highway. Plus, get Kia's 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. The best in the business. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. 
Does your vehicle need a little more work? Have an odd sound coming from somewhere? Bring it over to Jackson's Automotive in Old Town. We have the best technicians and offer a fair price. We also accept all aftermarket protection plans. Now, if you're unable to drive your vehicle to us, we can help you get it here. Also, if you'd like to protect your vehicle for years to come, we offer wool wax undercarriage protection. We're located at 546 Main Street in Old Town. Give us a call at 827-2676. Just remain calm. Grab the head. You grab the head. Animal Control premieres February 16th. It's on me now. On Fox. Welcome back into Friday Night Fast Break. Last couple minutes of the regular season here. Tyler Cruz here with Ryan Sudol, presented by Coastal Auto Parts. We've got a little bit of time left for some chit chat. Let's go to the rebound. All right, Ryan, we'll let you kick this round off, thank final you. round, you at the honors. Yes, what do you have you. for me? Well, Tyler, I stand by my picks for states, you know, except for one, obviously, but the, <laughs> the new ones I do. But I just want to talk about the fact that there are so many schools that can realistically sweep both the boys and the girls at state. Southern Rustic and Class D, they always seem to handle things last there. Year. And then you got Dexter and Class C. You got Class B, Old Town, and Ellsworth. That's going to be interesting, I think. Because yeah. I think the Ellsworth girls, people kind of sleep on them a little bit, they but do. they're right there. Exactly. And then you got Oxford Hills, a clear shot in Double A North, Wouldn't along with Chevrolet. You know, there's hardly any parity in this tournament this year, and that is what is going to make it so exciting. Yeah. Si- exciting. Yeah, exactly. It's not March Madness. It's the February frenzy. I'll steal yes. the joke that you wrote. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, <laughs> Let, wait, Let's talk Class B now. I saw Orno for the last time, really, before I get to go see them at the Cross Center tonight, and it looked like something flipped there. It was mid-second quarter. They gave up an easy two on the inside. It looked like someone just simply didn't rotate on defense, and Coach Ed Catala immediately called timeout. I watched him. He was probably halfway on the floor, and I could hear him yelling from where I was. Not yelling, but just getting his team fired up, getting them to play the way they can play, and it worked. 4 no run right out of the timeout, took the lead, never looked back, took a dozen point lead at halftime. His players responded right away, and it really, like, that's one of those things where when a season flips, you can look back at that moment and be like, that's where it flips. So it gets interesting. Old Town plays one of the best team defenses I have seen yet this year. I mean, the Coyotes, they are all over the court. They just handled Orno earlier in the week. So if they can get past Ellsworth, the 1-4, if they do match up, the Orno-Old Town matchup, if they meet in the playoffs, that could be one of the more memorable regional games that the Cross Center has ever seen. We're about a minute away, so let's close up some things in Orno. There are several professional and collegiate and youth teams celebrating girls and women in sports this week, and Maine women's hoops are no different. The Black Bears are hosting their annual National Girls and Women in Sports celebration on Saturday. These are some shots, some shots from last year's event. The day starts at 11 with an interactive sports fair with 16 varsity club and pro teams participating. And then at 1 p.m., the Black Bears take on NJIT in the main event, no pun. And the post game is an autograph signing. There's going to be bouncy houses, face painting. Slugger oh. the Sea Dog's going to be there, love Slugger, oh. and more. So that sounds like a great time. And I don't think people talk about women in sports enough, Ryan. I think they have a huge impact on the game. Yes, and uh, it's so good to see them getting the recognition that they deserve yeah, on Amy all does, sorts on all sorts of fronts. You know, in, the, in these last couple of days yep. with these celebrations, Amy does a great job yep. there, making sure that all gets noticed. That is all the time we have for you tonight and for the regular season of basketball. We hope you have a great rest of the evening. We will see you back here next Friday for some fast break tournament edition. Have a good night, everybody. For more local news coverage, switch over to our sister station, ABC7, right now for ABC7 News at 11. Neil reflected on the years that her co-counsel, Bob Jamboise, pursued justice for Julie Jensen. He did it because he cares so much about what happened to Julie Jensen. So just to be clear, do you think Mark Jensen will get another trial? No, he will not. But if he does, I'll be back and I'll try that son of a again. As for Kelly Labonte, who married Mark Jensen after Julie died, she divorced him in 2009 after his first trial and conviction. Kelly continued to raise Julie's children after Mark Jensen went to prison. And in recent years, Julie's brother says her son Douglas, now an adult, reached out to him. Douglas wanted to know more about his his mom. And so I was able to meet with him and uh, tell him that Julie loved him more than anything in the world and she never would have left him. 
as a mother, your whole goal in life is to protect and nurture your children.